Hey guys, it's Kayla and I'm back again today with another video. This video here is going to be a DIY ink storage. I've seen a lot of pins on Pinterest about it and I've seen quite a few videos actually on YouTube about it. However, I had a very hard time finding measurements that other people had used. Um, myself, I love building things, whether it's out of wood or in this case, foam board and doing the measurements and the calculations, as nerdy as that is, I like designing. So I made up my own design and I will include all the measurements that I used in the description box below. I decided to make each one of my storage cubbies in the unit three and a half by three and a half inches in, in width and depth and about an inch high. So that way there my regular ink pads would fit in very easily and they would hang out a little little bit just so I could get a grab on them and they were also wide enough for my distress inks to go in and I just put a little block at the back of each cubby that I put a distress ink in so that's the only measurement that's going to fluctuate is how many of those you need for how many distress inks you have however I mean if you're going to make one for just distress inks, well then you'd put one of these little blocks at the back of each of those. Or you could even take and make it narrower. Every measurement that I give that was um, three and a half, you could cut it down to two and three quarters um, because each of the little stubs that I put in at the back were three quarters of an inch. So that math, quick math off the top of my head, it sounds right. So I'll double check it and I'll put the notes in the description box either way. So. My entire unit is going to measure about 15 and a quarter inches tall and about an 11 and a half inches wide. And that gives me space for three, three and a half inch gaps. At the very top, I'm going to do them, instead of being one inch high, I'm going to do them two inches high. So I can put in little extras. I think I'm going to use um, some of my odd inks that I don't really use. I think they're called Studio G something. Um, that I got at Michael's a couple of years ago that I probably should just toss um, my blending sponges for my distress ink, such like that. Um, that's probably what I'll put up top. Or I'm thinking I might end up making drawers, little drawers in the future for it. Um, I'm not sure, but either way, I have quite a few of this form board left over. Um, the reason I hadn't done it before was because I couldn't find foam board in my area. And the other day I just happened to be going to the pet store and I went into the Great Canadian Dollar Store next door and I was looking around at all the Valentine's stuff because I know Valentine's Day is coming up in about, a, well, a few weeks. And just around the corner I happened to find a bin of foam board and it was only $2 uh, a sheet. So I picked up four. <laughs> slightly overkill but go big or go home so now I'm going to make some other things as well I think I'm gonna make some little shelves for my stickles so that they're not hanging upside down from my weird shelf thing in my craft room to understand you'd have to see it I'll have to show it at some point I guess but anyways enough about that um, so yeah I've sped this video up about as much as I possibly can and it's still going to be a relatively long video. So much footage is simply for the fact that when it comes to building anything, if you want to make sure that it's going to fit properly, I measure everything a few times. And you'll even if you're watching, if you've noticed, there's sometimes I'll draw the lines and I'll go back and I'll remeasure and I'll retweak the lines and I'll redraw a few lines and then I'll remeasure the whole way down top to bottom in the middle um, just because I'm very nitpicky on that aspect of it I guess I want it to fit properly I don't want to spend all this time doing it and it be lopsided or crooked or anything else like that um, so the only other thing beside the foam board and the ruler obviously that you would need I had a cutting mat and I don't have like a real a real cutting mat I have a kitchen cutting mat that I got at the dollar store also um, just to protect my table because I don't want to chop up my table and then the other thing would be an exacto knife or they do make foam 
board cutters. Um, I seen another girl had used this magical contraption and frankly, I was in too much of a rush to try and build this to order it in and wait. So that I'm just using an exacto knife. So some of the lines don't come out exactly straight up and down, but that's okay because I'm going to use a hot glue gun to glue everything together. I used it like a welding machine basically and I it ain't going nowhere for a while <laughs> so the exacto knife the ruler the cutting mat um, hot glue gun I used the it's from ad tech it's high temp glue gun uh, just whatever glue gun you have it's craft so as I was putting it together you'll see it when it gets to that part of the video um, for to make sure that my gaps or my wedges were even, I had a little piece that I cut to the right size to three and a half inches wide that it's another piece of the assembly, but I just stuck it there and I stuck the upwards divider, the little divider between the shelves right flush against it to glue it into place. That way each time I knew they were going to be in the right place. At the end, there's a few of them that are a little a little wonky but it's still very sturdy I'm actually quite surprised at how sturdy it was I think it took me about four hours maybe from the time I put the stuff on the table to the time it was fully assembled mind you that was also with taking care of a baby and taking breaks and answering I think I answered two phone calls while I was making this so not too bad so anyways um I guess I'll explain my measurements since we're we're watching <laughs> for each of the shelves and the top piece as well as well as the bottom piece I used pieces that were 11 inches wide by three and a half inches deep I used 20 pieces of the dividers for the middle um, they were each one inch high by three and a half inches long I used two pieces that were 15 and a quarter by three and three quarters for the outside edges. I had the back piece which was 11 inches by 15 and a quarter. And then I also used two pieces that were two and a quarter by three and a half for the top three cubbies. So yeah, those are the measurements that I had used. Like I said, I will write them in the description box below. Um, to make it wider really wouldn't be much of a problem um, to go you would change the backboard and each shelf um, to an extra three and three quarters for every extra cubby you want to add to it and it's that's pretty much it um, so yeah now basically I just finished up the assembly and I came back to it in my craft room. Um, I did leave the little quarter inch gap at the bottom so that I could slide my acrylic block underneath um, as well as my mini one and you'll see here the little um, blocks I put at the back. They're, they're nothing fancy it's just shoved back there and glued in place so that the distress, dis distressings don't slide all the way back. Like I said, I put uh, my little sponges up top. I used the middle row for my Hero Arts and my Memento. And then I also put my Memento Lux in there after and pigment inks. And I used my Rage inks on one side, my Distress inks on the other side. I don't have a fairly large ink collection, so it's not so bad. Um, but yeah, anywho, that's it. Finished product. Ready to go. Ready to use. Test it out. We'll see how long it lasts and I'll update that in the future. And comment, subscribe, let me know what you'd like to see and happy crafting.